Hello, can anybody hear me out there? Hello? Hello? Anybody out there? Can you guys hear me? Looks like we're live on um, on YouTube. Uh, can anybody confirm? Hey Camilo, how's it going? Shifali, how's it going? It's working? Okay, awesome. Facebook is working? Awesome. Can anybody confirm uh, YouTube and uh, Twitch? Hey, how's it going, Bien? Awesome. Cool, we'll get started in a couple minutes, just making sure that everything uh, is working for everybody. How's everybody doing? Hey, how's it going, Alex? How's the music? Is the music okay? So we're probably going to be working on this guy that I started off on my own personal stream. Um, you know, I just kind of blocked it out, so it's nothing, uh, nothing too crazy, and we're kind of I have the history, so we can go back and kind of see how that got how that got started. Let's see. Uh, well, let's go through some of this other stuff first. There we go. see okay uh, hey what's up uh, yeah hey uh, twitch it looks like it's working on twitch music is fine okay awesome I wanted to make sure it wasn't too loud cool thanks for everybody for confirming what's going on here so I just kind of wanted to um, well let's let's cover some basic stuff first for um, about who I am you know I've been doing visual effects uh, for about almost 20 years or so almost two decades here's my website uh, you guys can see some of my work here uh, I definitely need to update some of these uh, actual work in progress uh, things that I posted on here but you guys can see some of the projects I've been involved in uh, working on anything from characters environments but for the last at least I want to say at least the last 10 years it's been mostly characters uh, creature work so feel free to check out my website at magvfx.com. I'll put a link on the, let's do that now. Check it out. Um, so here's some of the things that I do on the side for fun, uh, creating stuff in VR, ZBrush, uh, anywhere, clay, um, and then kind of selling them at shows. Uh, so I think what we're gonna continue today is uh, it's part of something I made a long time ago, which is this this little guy, this little samurai guy. Uh, I want to continue that series. I have a few other blockouts that I don't want to show yet, but this is kind of like one that uh, I figure we can start one from scratch. Um, so we'll continue this. This is a 3D print I made probably eight to ten years ago uh, when I didn't have my own printers. Uh, but yeah, we'll probably continue on this guy. Uh, if you guys want to follow me on Instagram, uh, I post a lot of stuff that I usually don't post on Facebook or talk about uh, besides uh, Instagram. So here's a few things, like what we did in our previous streams uh, with, uh, with, you know, making that um, Halloween mask and a few other things. So feel free to check that out. 
uh, a couple other projects I was involved in. So it's all linked in my website. Uh, my Gumroad. So my Gumroad, I started updating, upda updating some stuff. I have a 3D scanner, so I might put more things later. But uh, if you want to um, grab my UI, feel free to log in here. And this, this gives you all my materials, my layout, any of my preferences, uh, in case you guys need that. Because I know that sometimes uh, people ask about that, and you guys can have that and follow along if you guys want to, or you know, take whatever whatever works for you guys. Uh, what else? Uh, are you guys excited about Designer Con that's coming up at the end of this month? Uh, it's gonna be awesome. This time I'm not having a table there just because I'm I'm too busy with work and family. Uh, but you know I'll be attending probably Saturday. Uh, it's a great event for anybody that designs uh, toys and that type of stuff. So feel free to come by and check it out. Um, the other thing that's like super exciting is uh, the release of uh, ZBrush 2020, right? Um, there's so many new features. Uh, I can't wait to to use any of these these guys. There's so many uh, really awesome uh, features. For me, I think the main one is going to be the the Morph UV. Uh, I think that feature for me is going to be a game changer because there's so many times I wanted to do things that and the poly paint because I didn't use poly paint too much in the past. Oh, hi from Denmark, huh? Mads, awesome. Where's everybody else from? Uh, just you know, feel free to post where you're where you're checking in from. Um, yeah, the poly paint is going to be a big game changer for me because I stayed away from it just because I felt it was very limited before, but maybe to two or three tone colors. But now that you could change so much of this stuff with masking, I think it's going to be open to a whole new workflow for uh, for how we do all the paint stuff. You know, um, the other one that's really good for me is also like the visualizer for uh, for three D printing. Since this, we do so much three D printing here on this channel, um, it's going to be it's going to be awesome. Feel feel free to check that out if you guys have. Uh, time um, when it comes out and check out the live streams that kind of cover a lot of that, that stuff uh, let's see so I wanted to kind of wrap up the previous projects we had uh, which were um, let's see is it these guys here let's see awesome it looks like they unloaded so let me uh, Let's go over some of the stuff we did in our previous um, stream, just so you guys can see where it ended up at. Uh, so this is where we were at uh, last time uh, during Halloween. You know, I made a little pumpkin for you guys. Uh, you guys checked it out. Kind of was cool. So I want to show you guys where it went, where it went to. I only spent another maybe hour or so. Um, working on this stuff so it's not a um, it wasn't like I spent another five hours or so oh hi thanks for joining uh, Vicky from India huh that's awesome uh, so let's turn that off so here's kind of what we ended up with yeah uh, you know if we go back and forth between those two guys you can see that some of the stuff was pretty rough kind of went back and uh, refined some more of that stuff just so that it felt more uh, integrated Did you guys actually enjoy the the process of this whole um, making this making this guy? Because if not, we we can uh, we could add more of these little type of in between projects, uh, between the bigger projects that might take a couple weeks or a couple sessions. Um, but other than that, we also took it into our friend Substance Painter. <clears throat> so this is kind of what he ended up being uh, more like, you know, just kind of like a starting to rot pumpkin you know you starting to get some of those black spots and white spots that you get um and this is just something that uh you know i put together at the same time when i was hanging out with a friend um just kind of just talking and chatting and then just kind of you know putting this uh, final image together but let's close that guy out just wanted to kind of show you guys you know that how long how much more longer it takes to finish the project another hour or two and then you know you can uh well, from there but one thing that I wanted to work on today was this guy which is uh, which is part of my samurai uh, insect line that I that I've been doing for a couple years now um, I started this on my own channel like I said earlier on, I think it's Maggie effects on twitch uh, a few weeks back like when I was just playing around testing uh, the stream uh, but then I ended up with this guy 
And the reason I brought the human guy in is because I want to make sure as reference what he uh, what he would look like. Like so, if this is a six foot human, um, I want to I want to make sure that this guy's a little more his proportions are a little more scary, a little more insect like, less human like. So that's the reason that he I'm bringing him in so we can see like if it's starting to get too human, I kind of want to change it up, you know. I uh, don't want to just make it a, a perfect replica because then it's just like a guy in a costume. So if because we're in CG, we in, in, you know we can do whatever we want. So we can actually make them skinnier, things that are not possible, like making extra skinny, extra long, um, add a couple more uh, aspects of like the insects. So this is kind of like what I wanted to play around with um, here. I think he's, he's his arms are still too human, so I might elongate some of the like the lower part of the arm. Uh, we'll play around with uh, maybe adding some legs or playing around with the face. Uh, but yeah, what do you guys think? <clears throat> and here's some of the... I'll isolate some of these parts so you guys can see kind of how I got started. I kind of recorded the, the... kept the history so you guys can see a little bit that, you know, all this stuff obviously it starts from a sphere uh, most of the time. And just kind of playing around with, you know, just different proportions, different way of thinking about it. Here, I was just kind of like, ah, oh, what, what can he look like if he was with some longer horns? So we'll go through some of this more detailed stuff and, you know, more body and the uh, rest of the, of the character. But I just kind of want to give you guys a little bit of an insight so you guys can see kind of like how this guy got to where he's at now. Um, same thing with the body. So, you know, just kind of blocking out the torso, a little bit of the back, just because we're, you know, sometimes you get, you know, get, you start playing around with this stuff and get stuck on one view. You really always need to just keep blocking stuff out. And here's, you know, different shapes that I played around with. Just kind of using human anatomy to kind of help me inform uh, where I'm going to lay out some of these landmarks. So one thing I tend to do uh, recently on my, my latest workflow. Um, let me see. Just hold on. Let's check the stream. Make sure everybody's good. Oh, thanks, Ricky. Uh, lock the mesh inside the views. Um, Oh, bump, bump it off center. Oh, well, yeah, you, you could do a couple things, right? There's a, there's like the cameras all the way in the bottom. Let's see, where is it at? It's documents. Yeah, so if you use a like document, right? So let's say I had I had this line up the way I want it, right? Uh, and you have the background image. Let's see if there's anything in the background. Well, if you have, you know, see-through and you have something in the background that you really like and it's lining up, uh, you could do the custom or you could do left right center so if I let's say I do the custom and then I want to go and start sculpting something else a different part of the model right and then I come back and I'm like okay now it's not matching if you go back to uh, document and you go to custom it puts it back to where it was at so that always gives you like a way to go back to that view um, let's see maybe it's easier if I just had something in the background so you can see ref back here so you guys can see this is uh, some of the reference that we'll cover on what, why we're doing some of this stuff so let's say let's say you have something like this right and you're lining up to this torso and let's say that's my torso that I'm like proportions I really like and I'm kind of tracing that so now you could clear it out uh, clear all views right so in case uh, you're like oh I, I'm, I'm done with that view then you could go to custom one or custom two Let's go to custom two <clears throat> and let's say you're playing around with this stuff you change something dramatically and you're like oh i can't get it to line up or i want it to line up exactly then if you go to custom two it's back to line up exactly the way it was before um does that kind of make sense that kind of help uh what you were asking
yeah yeah we'll continue the the progress on on the primary form so you know right now just kind of giving you guys a little bit of a breakdown oh minnesota that's awesome that's cool so, so many people coming from different places oh, awesome yeah it's good yeah work along if you guys are working on your own project it's always it always helps to kind of um <coughs> sorry a bit, bit of a cough here so we'll continue with the explanation that i was talking about so one workflow that I've been liking a lot recently is, um, let's see, let's double, let's uh, duplicate this guy, move it off to the side. Let's get rid of X. So now we have these two guys and I can move this guy off, turn them off. So one workflow that I've been doing is, uh, for me, it's sometimes easier to block out things and move things uh, like like really fast using uh, move topological or, or any brush, you know, like let's say I'm moving the pecs, right? Well, cause I turned uh, X off um, and I'm adjusting this stuff. It's easier for me to adjust an individual simple shape. Like, you know, let's say I want this to be overlapping more, but I don't really want to affect the shapes at the bottom. It's easier for me to use uh, the move topological brush because it, it's easier for me to isolate that section on let's say the, the lats, right? I wanna, I wanna adjust those guys. Because if I had the regular move brush and I'm trying to move it, it's gonna move everything, which in some cases you do want. In most cases you do want it. But in this case, sometimes I'm like, oh, I only wanna move one specific muscle group, right? Thailand, awesome. Uh, yeah, I know the it's always a struggle to block out a, like a lot of this stuff in the beginning because it always looks really crude and kind of, um, you know, it looks pretty bad. And, and the more you add, the more you start blending. But one trick that I found that's easy for me is like to do these tweaks, right? Um, here you see I'm starting to fill in that gap and then I can also just shrink my brush and then just kind of fill in that gap even more, you know. Um, and you, then if you, let's say you're having issues, you can always just like uh, mask it and then block that even more if you wanted to use back to the old just move brush. So like, you have multiple ways of doing it, right? You can mask things, but for me, I find it way easier than having to mask and unmask, mask and unmask to use the move topological because it's it's using it based on your, on your topology and because they're not continuous, you're easy, you can make simple adjustments. Yeah, yeah, try that out, you know, let me know what you think. Uh, but the, the biggest thing for me is that, let's say I'm really happy with this but now it's like, well, how do you blend this? You know, if you're trying to smooth it, it ain't gonna, it's not going to connect together, right? And you're like, oh, this, well, this kind of sucks. But no, it's actually really awesome because now you can go to Dynamesh at all. Oh. Let's undo that real quick. Uh, the main trick between this workflow that you can keep Dynamesh even if you insert new spheres, and you'll see that as I'm going, is that if you had to click on groups, because that means it's going to keep each group at its own dynamesh, even though they're all one object, which is like my favorite. Like it's it's like really cool to do, right? Because uh, that means like everything stays isolated. You could have more control over it. But at the end, like what I was trying to demonstrate right now before, uh, I think it just froze. Um, but we'll, we'll give it a minute. Is that. Um, oh, there we go. Is that if you turn off. See, right now it's pretty dense, right? But everything's separated, their own polygroups, and you can't blend together. But if you turn off groups, and then we try to dynamesh it, we'll keep it like uh, like this so you guys can see. Now it's going to actually fuse all those all those groups together, which is like a really awesome thing to do because now you could like smooth everything in between, everything blends into itself, but it also keeps the polygroups. So you see, this looks like it's separated, but now they're all connected. You know, it's all one, but it still keeps the polygroup. So if you want it to continue to even further refine it, you, you can. So what did I mean by that, right? Like earlier I was trying to smooth it and nothing was happening. So now if I smooth it, you see now it's all one piece. <laughs> One continuous piece, but still has polygroups if you want to use those for like, I want to isolate things. But now you can choose to like uh, blend in areas like the chest and then have it fade out to like uh, almost look like a separate piece. 
you know, or even these pieces. You see how now we could blend all this stuff together. Especially like the neck part, you know, like all this stuff look like now you can like blend it all together and make it look like one surface. Which is, I think that's the power of this, this workflow. Let's see. Yeah, it's almost like having different subtools, which you can, and that's the way I used to do it before. But the problem is that then you have to click through each one, or even if you're using the arrows, let's say you want to get to one at the bottom, then it's going to take like 10 clicks just to get to the bottom one, especially when you have like this many subtools. And then it becomes kind of like really annoying to, to work with, right? Because it's like super slow. Now you're clicking so many times where like if you have one object, then you could just blend that in together. And at the end, just blend all, like do all the blending of all the muscles, right? Let's get rid of this guy because this guy is no good anymore. So like here, like, you know, you see that it's a couple of poly groups, real simple shapes. I'm just blocking out like the proportions. So I, right now I can tweak all this stuff like pretty easily. You know, like if I'm looking at the shoulders, move to my uh, move topological. And I can move those individuals. So I, I do mostly tend to do like the primary forms, like here, like the, I think I'm missing one of the heads of the, on the back or the front of the, of the shoulders. But here I can at least start playing around with this stuff, make it blend. You know, I probably have to go in and insert a few more things like the elbow. Uh, it's kind of missing right now, but right now I'm just trying to block out the overall, right? So that stuff doesn't matter. So what I'll do is I'll kind of separate it per limb. So like, as you can see here, there's like the, the arms and then I have the torso and then I have the head. So here I could either continue by inserting more. So one, the tool that I use is the, so if you go to your brushes and then press I, <coughs> I use the insert uh, brush, right? Insert primitives. So from here you can pick whatever you want, but I, I always tend to pick the sphere. Uh, cause that's kind of like the shape that's like the easiest to modify. Um, so you just click and drag and then that gives you the power to like mask everything out. Right. And then like here we can start uh, building up the leg, depending on like what we want. Right. Like, and you could be super rough cause right now we're just kind of like in the blocking out stage, you know? So as you can see, like everything starts to fall apart because of the, because topology starts to get ugly. Right. Which is fine. It will get ugly. No big deal. Whatever. Here you could use, you know, all your, you could use any tool you have available to you. Uh, you have the big move tool if something doesn't look right, or any other stuff, right? So here, let's try that again because this. So if you see the topology is like pretty terrible. But it's like, how do we fix that? So now we can go into keeping groups on. You could dynamesh it. And keep everything pretty low. And you see everything stays the way it is. And I didn't lose the polygroups. They're just, I, I took this off. Uh, FW, I think. So it looked like everything was kind of gone, right? And now you could go ahead and go and smooth this stuff. And we need to add some bulk to this, right? So just go inflate and here's where like you maybe want to mask some of this stuff and then inflate so that you don't actually disturb like the rest of the stuff that uh, you're working on but the move topological is like going to be your best friend in this occasion like uh, the way you block all this stuff out because it makes it so much easier to to kind of tweak things on the fly without having to change polygroups you know but here, you know, I see his butt looks a little weird, so I'm kind of fix fixing that. No, none of this stuff is really in danger of, of you know, 3D scanning. Because you could 3D scan anything, but then you also have to create it. So sometimes it's easier to create in Zebra, sometimes it's easier to create in, in real life. So or, or you could hire an artist that's an amazing sculptor. So I don't think, I think it's good to learn this stuff because if you combine this workflow with like, uh, like I did with the pumpkin, right? I didn't want to sculpt the pumpkin. So I just, I, I scanned one of the pumpkins that I had and then just made the face and then fused them together and there we're done, you know? Yeah, I could have probably spent like 30 minutes sculpting a really nice pumpkin, but why? I want to be, I want to do the creative stuff, not the generic, uh, generic stuff, right? The 
Does that kind of answer your question? But yeah, you should definitely dig into digital sculpting. It's, you know, it's amazing. So let's insert. So, you know, this that's kind of the workflow. So now we go back to insert insert sometimes i'll do i'll just insert a whole bunch of well, one thing you want to make sure that you don't go to the middle because then it'll sometimes fuse them together later and that could be kind of annoying so you're just kind of blocking more of the back of the leg and you know like the main thing is not to be so precious with this stuff because yeah you could take your time and be like i just want to tweak this thing and get this going and it's not working but the main thing is you want to see this as, as quickly as possible, right? So, and if you have some basic knowledge of anatomy, then you know that, you know, you have a few muscles back there. And now let's insert another one. So you kind of go through this kind of quickly, you know, um, as you see me doing here. Of course, knees are like pretty bulky, but sometimes people make them like super skinny. <laughs> if you have more questions, feel free to ask. Um, you know, it's uh, that's what I'm here for to to help you guys in any way I can. And let's push that out more. So here's, you know, you can use a couple different tools. So like, say you don't want to just like move it over. You can just use that scale instead of using the move tool. Um, obviously if it's not in the right spot there from there, we can start playing around with this. And I think that's the main thing, just getting used to being like super rough in the beginning to see like where this is all kind of going. So here, this guy's looking pretty tall now, uh, which could be a good thing or a bad thing, but let's say he's looking too tall. Um, we can mask this and break the mask. And we can either use uh, this one to kind of shrink them down, right? Or, or change the pivot if we press uh, Alt, you can change the pivot to where all this stuff is at, or you can go old school and turn uh, the gizmo 3D off by just kind of clicking up there and then use the old gizmo. Uh, for me, I, I like I like combining both because it's kind of cool. And here, I, I could just kind of use the scale to kind of uh, well, switch the scale actually to kind of um, shrink some of the stuff down. And and the nice thing is that if you set the pivot there on the, on that gizmo, it kind of stays for the other one. But you know, it's up to you. However, you want to shrink this stuff down if the proportions feel like they're getting out of hand or they're getting kind of weird. You know, you could do that. Um, that's just kind of a quick way to kind of play around with stuff, but I tend to just kind of shrink some stuff down just like that. But you see, it's looking kind of ugly. It's missing a few muscles, but that's the whole point, right? We're, we're continuing to block this out and that's what we're going to do today. Is that cool with you guys? Kind of block this out and then maybe take the face and fine tune it. Yeah, I know. So I hate the red wax. This is like a different material, but yeah, I, I know what you mean. I, I lose. I like using red just because red is my favorite color. So, but these guys are not the red wax at all. I hate that red wax uh, material too. I know what you mean. So from here, it looks like he's kind of, um, you know, maybe needs a little bit of a pose adjustment so he doesn't look so kind of, I guess, uh, what do you call it, a little wimpy. So it feels like it's uh, more posed a little nicer. Well, let's go over some of the reference too. Um, yeah, so we're, we do a little bit of both, right? Hard surface and um, organic with this guy. But let's show, let me show you guys the reference that I'm kind of looking at uh, that I put together last night or this a little bit this morning, a little bit last night. So looking at some of these samurais, you know, um, the prongs from uh, District 9 are some of my favorite characters. So I want to make sure that maybe introduce a little bit of this kind of strange proportions. Um, so I don't want to make it too human. So maybe we'll start implementing some of the legs from here. 
or something similar. I'm not like ripping this stuff off. I just more inspired by, you know, here's some other stuff from like uh, Simon Lee, like how long his proportions are. So maybe we can start playing around with some of that because maybe that makes him feel more uh, a little bit human, but not so like copy human directly, you know? And that's one thing you want to do. Unless you're doing something human specifically, stick to that. But if it's, uh, if it's, if you're doing your own thing, make sure you modify things, you know, make them different because that's the whole point, right? Being able to like design things on the fly and design things that are not possible. So some of the stuff that I like for inspiration is like some of these uh, bugs, you know, like uh, I collect a lot of bugs, but like if you look at some of these limbs, like we could start introducing some of this like concave stuff onto the, maybe the leg or something like that. Oh, well, let me move my chat window so I can read it over here. It doesn't look like I'm looking away from you guys. Um, yeah, the red wax is interesting, right? Cause uh, when it came out, I hated it and you know, I, I never used it after that, but one thing I noticed is if you use it at the end of your model, sometimes it shows flaws and you could still fix those. So it's like a love and hate relationship with that material. No, I think you have to download it yourself, uh, but I would check probably the website and they'll probably be talking about it on Tuesday when they when it gets released. I think Tuesday or Thursday, I'm not sure which, which day it's getting released on. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's fine. If you have anything you want some feedback on, that's great. Uh, send it, send me a link now and then I, we can talk about it. And, and you know, that, uh, I'm, I'm happy to give you guys some feedback. Well, okay, so that's kind of what I'm talking about, the reference, right? Like the reference stuff, like obviously he's kind of a samurai beetle, samurai insect-like thing, you know? So that's why I have this references so that I can see like, oh, kind of the structure of, of how this works, you know, like how, let me, uh, that on top so we can kind of split the screen um, like some of the stuff that I'm doing with that with the head right um, like I kind of got inspired that I need to have something that has this shape I'm not exactly a, you know I think I have a, I had a circle in here at one time yeah you know, and I just kind of blocked that out and was like, okay, that's kind of similar to that. But now how do I make it my own, you know? So I just kind of start blocking stuff out that way. Uh, same thing with like the overall, like how many, how much padding there is, what kind of uh, chest armor protection there is. And that's kind of what I was blocking out there. Uh, one of the things that I really like about this book that I found last night is the colors, right? So I was thinking, what if he was pretty dark and he had hints of blue, but then his armor had like the super vibrant blue on top of it, you know, to kind of... Like, the, like that would be a cool paint job or some of the things that I'm looking at is like maybe this is part of his face uh, maybe some of the details I will add to his face like these little wrinkles or, or even just like the some of the sharp things that are translucent so this is kind of just inspiration like I maybe won't use it but it's good to have there in case yeah pure riff is like the best right uh, or even potentials for like a face like well what if I what if the eye was in a perfect circle and it had like a little dip like that um, like that could be interesting or, or some of the texture that's happening here. Um, one thing I was thinking about doing was kind of making him maybe like a big of a ladybug because like ladybugs are always cute. And it's like, what if he was like a really mean, like ladybug, you know? Also looking at the amount of detail, because sometimes I think we tend to over detail things where like sometimes simple shapes are like the best. Like if you look at this, I think this is like a flea or tick. Like how simple the surface is, but the edges have a breakup, you know, or, or maybe there's like hair or like little um, breakup with like this big round shape, but then there's like these spiky things at the bottom. So that's kind of how I'm using the reference uh, to kind of help me like inspire how do you, how do you do this? Oh, how do you insert uh, that stuff? Yeah, let's, uh, let me switch, let me switch on to full screen on this. Um, so let's continue to add maybe a foot or something. Uh, so if you go to brushes and you press I, that will take you to all these insert brushes, but we're sticking with the IMM primitives. So we click on those, that gives you all these guys to play around with, but I tend to just kind of use the sphere and that's the active one. So we can, uh, from here, like I said, we can insert some muscles back here. So if you click and drag, then you can start uh, moving some of this stuff to kind of give you like a, bit of a muscle shape you know
and if it starts to get kind of ugly because like the topology is like breaking apart that's when we can just uh dynamesh it and now and this guy should go pretty high but you know most of the time the, the highlight is like so from the front let's see we can start tweaking this guy so that the other guy from the back and sometimes you have to hit it pretty hard with some of these brushes to kind of um, hint as like where that inside bone is at. And then we could keep tweaking like, and I keep tweaking that muscle right here so that it pops, you know, and it has an offset so that it's like, and then some stuff starts to get a little flat. That's when you start adding a little more bulk. So let's add some more muscles up there. So a lot of this, a lot of this stream is a lot basically design, design orientated. So sometimes maybe we'll cover techniques as well, but you know, this guy should be going to the back. And I also tend to over inflate some stuff because then we could take it down later. You know, and here I'm just roughing out the anatomy like super rough. There's nothing that's like super accurate yet. You know, we'll eventually make that happen, you know, by cutting some of these guys like in this case, right? I want to make it a little more accurate. And we start introducing this guy into the picture and then this guy will kind of come down come pretty thin at the bottom but then we're starting to get that shape that you probably expect to have and then the connection here you know but we're blocking this stuff out so there's no need for anything crazy you know um, Gonna insert some more primitives on the side to make up some muscles that are on the side. Then we can work on the butt pads or the glutes. But there's some muscles that come out from the side. That means this guy needs to go in a bit. That's kind of how we start blocking out the legs, you know, and even at this point we can still kind of rotate them because they don't, they don't, he doesn't feel like he's standing on this stuff pretty strongly. Let's see any comments uh, on somebody's work. Uh, did somebody post their link to their work? Yes. Let's see. Oh, cool. So here's somebody's work. Um, I think your name is uh, Zero d something i oh, know uh a beerness cool yeah yes yeah, so we'll, we'll be making something similar to this this is kind of like uh the, the direction we're heading you know um so i think this stuff looks fine i think maybe you just want to refine some of your shapes like uh like some of the stuff that i'm looking at that's kind of becoming noisy is like the shoulder pad it feels like there's just too much going on like i like what you have going on in the chest it feels kind of simple but like concisive like like everything makes sense uh even like the the side uh, the ribs and all that stuff that feels pretty good but the shoulder pad to me feels like a bit too messy i guess um where it's kind of hard to read where like the back of the head you see you have like the like the cheekbones following the structure from the to the back of the head and you have that repeating shape that's good even the front from the, the beetle kind of a filler type of thing that that looks great probably the lower arm too but that might be just a rough thing uh, one thing that i tend to do like if i'm starting to get too much of these like striations is uh let's say uh let's go with this guy here right make sure there's enough resolution so let's say you're using um clay tubes right and you're starting to block out like that muscle you're like i want some fibers or something 
but like it's it's really hard because it's maybe too dense uh, you haven't rebuilt it uh, one thing that I tend to do is uh, you can always go to deformations and polish or polish by feature depending on which one you want to do and like what that does is like it makes it really nice and clean so that you get rid of all those little imperfections that maybe are not doing much for you they're actually making things look too busy uh, that's like the thing that I would kind of play around with uh, in your in your design let's see where is it at? yeah that I would kind of just kind of clean up like if this is supposed to be a nice clean line like maybe clean up the other lines that are kind of uh, I guess making it look kind of too busy and clean those up also like uh, maybe his ankles need to be a little bigger because he feels like he might not be able to kind of hold this whole body he looks pretty pretty like a big pretty big dude so i would say maybe go ahead and kind of just bulk this stuff up just a bit more kind of like that that thigh leg you know or, or even this like this maybe the the wrist could be a, a little bigger as well that's kind of my suggestion uh let me know what you think but yeah, but we all start kind of like this, right? Like I want this guy to be kind of like a general, but like a slanky, muscular, like a, like maybe like a runner, like type of body. That's kind of what I'm kind of I'm thinking of going. Let's see. Uh, Okay, came in too late. Yeah, we talked about inserting uh, using pure ref. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So this is kind of like a. It's not like it's not a copy of any of those specific Beatles or anything like that. It's just more inspired by. So it's not like a specific copy of a tick or any of that stuff or even the. Any any of these specific things, you know, just kind of like, kind of what I feel like like the flow of this helmet looks pretty cool but how does that look from the front maybe I don't like it so I'll block things out like that real quick but it's nice to see like the amount of primary forms there are, that are on there you know or like how high does that actually go like where are his actually eyes sitting uh, at where can he see from Yeah, yeah, it's like some of that, some of that reference, right? Like, uh, or some of this stuff is like pretty furry once you get pretty close. But like, like this stuff, you know, there's so many details um, that you could help kind of break your design up. Like, let's say you have a nice, simple shape, but even these little details kind of help it, um, you know, make it look more real. Yeah, yeah, the auto masking is like pretty awesome. Well, that's what that's what the uh, move topological brush does like it kind of like auto masks for you so you don't have to keep going back and forth you know awesome yeah i'm glad the the hopefully the feedback helps you um get it there you know it just you have to always think of like you maybe add all the detail and then smooth it out and see how it looks and then we go back and refine the detail that actually matters and that's one of the biggest things, right? Like if you look at all these shapes, they're like really simple shapes. And then they have, you know, a little bit of secondary, like even this shape, right? Like it's, it's really like a pointy little shape that just has like some extrusions and that's it. And then a main cut and that's it. Same thing with these guys, like, especially this guy, you can see like all the simple basic shapes. And that's kind of what we want to get to first, you know, like even this, this is like really cool. That's kind of what I was playing around. Maybe he has like some like uh, little arms. You know, but some of the stuff I want to play around with is proportions today. So if we block all this stuff out, how can we uh, make that work? You know, so let's uh, let's move this over so we can have some room to uh, start designing. Uh, can, what what is the question? Can you show all the uh, all the models uh, best of the best? I wouldn't say there's best of the best because that's subjective to your liking, what you like. So 
do you like comics do you like uh cartoony stuff like what 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 style do you like so it's kind of hard to say like oh this is the best because maybe that's the best in that genre but not the best in the world or not the best in whatever project you're trying to do so that's one thing you also want to keep in mind you know like uh like this like this prong stuff like i like it and that's kind of what i want to be inspired by but maybe it's not the best for this project you know but i just kind of want to help get the inspiration going for for it you know let's see <laughs> yeah i should do a fly next right <laughs> i have i've done many flies and and um they're not they're not the most fun uh things to work on <laughs> to be honest i had to do a few flies for a commercial once and they're just kind of like really gross like not gross in like a cool way they're just gross like all right so you have a tube that comes out of your mouth and you're just like spitting stuff out or, or sucking stuff up and you know uh but maybe i maybe i'll make a fly maybe I, i'm a big fan of the fly movie so you never know maybe we'll make a what would what would a i think the fly would uh would look cool as so here we could insert a thumb or we can go ahead and just kind of block out some of the you know if i want him to have just like three hand three uh three fingers just kind of block that out and here's where i just like move stuff around but i also tend to to sketch like super roughly like okay here's a potential finger and then uh you know maybe he has a little bit of a, of, of a human hand you know or or start bulking some of this stuff up so a lot of it is like your subject matter what are you trying to do like uh, like what i want to do with this guy is like probably 3d print him as a statue where like maybe he just fought like uh like a big spider type of creature and he's stepping on it and he just like speared him that's what kind of what i'm thinking right now but it could all change and this is just of course the blockout stage so i'm just playing around with ideas but that's kind of what i'm thinking that i kind of want to do with him so the longer he is the probably better he is oh, i switch over to my lasso tool But it's all this stuff kind of making sense to like what which which direction i'm kind of flowing towards and uh why i'm doing what i'm doing and also is this fun for you guys are you guys enjoying like the process of of actually creating this guy see so i'll go back and forth if i see something that looks like this these arms are starting to look way too thin so i'm trying to figure out like well how can i bulk them out you know because now i'm seeing at different angles and seeing that like oh well that's not quite working so how can i kind of bulk them up insert some more stuff so a lot of it's just kind of going in there and just not being scared to insert insert some of this stuff to see how it looks and if it's working or not you know because at some point if you can see it quickly and see what's not working then this could be pretty awesome i need to get more used to using a uh, sculptress as well i haven't been haven't been using it too much keep forgetting it's there since i'm so used to my my specific workflows uh, sometimes i forget that it's uh, a tool that's available for us but maybe with this new refresher of uh 2020 i'll start implementing it back into my or, or into my workflow Because yeah, you could you could do this, right? You could mask this and push this out and move it around. But for me, it feels more much more freeing to be able to have like everything kind of blocked out as a separate object. 
because then if I, if I don't like it, I could just remove it and then or blend it in later, you know? I usually start to texture once I have a, a quick block out, like maybe I spend like a few hours on it. Like this, I wouldn't do it yet because this is still super rough, but maybe once I start blending some of these things, I, I could start um, blocking out. So I would say probably maybe next session and I will do something super quick and like using ZBrush UVs and then uh, taking it to Substance Painter and then going from there to kind of uh, uh, to kind of do some quick renders and then that's how throwaway works. So I want to spend at least the least amount of time like one hour to texture it just kind of like I did that pumpkin and then see what's working and what's not. That's the same thing I did with the Halloween uh, horn guy. Uh, I did a quick render. It's like, okay, that's kind of what I'm going to go with and that worked out even even before I added any detail. So you see now he's starting to feel a little more less less human right with the longer arms and but now his legs aren't long enough. <laughs> That's fine, because that's what we're here to do, right? So here it's okay to use that the overall larger larger move tool. Let's check out some of the more reference that I have just to and I never tend to have one reference like really big. I tend to have like tons of them just kind of uh at different sizes so that I can not get stuck with one thing that I'm like, oh, it has to be that, you know? Uh, Cause that's, you get in danger of, of uh, this. Like, see now these guys are starting to feel too thin. So now I can uh, mask everything else or there you go, mask it. Oh. That's where it's still masking it. Well, let's unmask everything. Oh, I see why. And these guys are starting to become too skinny. So we're going to have to just hit the one inflate. And then also, if you don't I have this thing on my interface, so that if you don't want to see the mask, sometimes that's distracting, right? Like here, these two tone colors could be like kind of not helping you with the silhouette. Now we can start bulking these things up and be like, okay, that feels good. And this is actually a little too much. That's not too bad because he's still going to have some armor. But of course, this is only the block out, right? So let's, uh, let's continue on this, guys. I'm thinking that we're gonna make him we're gonna add another limb to him because why not right if we don't like it we go always remove it and one thing to also do and don't forget to do almost every 20 minutes is save because the last thing we need to do is having to do this again because sometimes you lose momentum that way so save often Thanks. I'm glad you, you enjoy the stream because, you know, I, I want to have fun with you guys. This is just for fun. I'm, I'm not in production mode right now. Right now, I'm just in like, let's explore some stuff and see what comes out of it. What can we do that's uh, that's fun that we can 3D print or make a mask or just do for fun? Because like, why not? Uh, tomorrow's update no is it tomorrow oh okay I, I wasn't sure when it was i i, I don't even know what day it is to the 10th i only know it was today because i set up an alarm for my stream but if not i wouldn't i wouldn't probably even know what day it is today from here so you see so we're just blocking everything out and now here we're just going to add some hints of of some 
anatomy and maybe make this joint feel like it's uh, you know like more of a stronger joint let's insert another another primitive So here I'm just looking at that, um, what is it called, uh, that flea, just kind of high hats its joints. Uh, what kind of character am I making? Um, just a generic kind of like my own like uh, insect warrior type of character. So, you know, just kind of blocking him in. Here he can either be. I'm thinking two tails would probably be nice, right? That way, it's more like a hoof, like maybe. See, so here I'm starting to combine kind of like a like a cow or horse to like an insect so we're just playing around with stuff you know so here let's see let's look at some samurai samurai uh, armor type of stuff see what's going on with the legs so one thing that samurais tend to have uh, is uh, armor so we want to make sure we represent the armor at a really rough stage kind of like what I had up there you know which I didn't even finish blocking out, but. Well, let's go back to our, our gizmo. I like, I really like using the gizmo 3D. It's like pretty cool. Which, not, not that I don't like using the old one, but the old one has its uses. It's just not. I don't need it right now. I'll clean some of that topology. So now we can do some uh, some quick mockups of uh, so it doesn't feel like a limb. Well, it doesn't seem like it uh, dynamized it. Okay, all right, we should be good. So where's everybody from uh, here? I know some of you guys replied, so you don't you guys don't have to reply, but I'm sure some other people joined the stream. I'm just interested to see like where where people are coming from. Uh... Cuz it's it's always cool to have a new audience that you never knew uh, existed. So here, see that I could that could be some some pad work. Netherlands, that's awesome. What time is it over there right now? Get pretty badly, so let's change that. All right. So by clicking on the face now, it's it should be doing what I want it to do. Is it loco? Hmm. Nah, no big deal. Sometimes things work out, sometimes they don't. So not a big deal. Do now. Maybe it's just easier to insert a new one. <laughs> Sometimes we just gotta do that. 
Looks like I inserted another one up there. That's fine. So what are you guys uh, trying to get in? Uh, 11, 11 p.m. Wow, wow, 11. Uh, wow, that's crazy times over there. Here's just I'm just waking up. I just woke up like an hour ago. Some of you guys are going to sleep or up late, which is cool. So what is some of the stuff you guys want to do uh, career-wise or with ZBrush? Are you guys trying to get into VFX, 3D printing, um, games, or what, what is some of your, so what are some of the stuff you guys want to do? So I'm just masking this stuff just to get a little bit of a of a border on these on this stuff so that it looks it looks kind of cool just to get like a little really rough block out of like some of the shapes so they don't feel like they're blending into the organic stuff. You know they might. They just uh, just kind of try to make them feel different. Still student now. Okay, that's cool. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. The good thing is that you're you're learning, so that's uh, that's a big plus. Let's see what can we do with that. So either I accidentally, yeah, I guess I accidentally deleted my my pad earlier. I have no big deal. Just make a new one. And you know, one thing to always keep in mind: sometimes these designs work out, sometimes they don't. But that's the whole reason we're here, right? To explore what what's going on with the design and how we can make this better. Get the miles in, put in the work. See, so that kind of helps him build. Like he's he's block, he's getting blocked out pretty well. Now I think the legs are too long. So one thing we can do now is uh, this looks okay. So all these part, all these things are part of the torso and the legs. So here's where we can go and mask this stuff. And uh, there we go. It feels better. I know such a small change, right? But at a distance, like look how long they were. They were like down here. I guess it's auto saving or shooting all the way back. Come on. There we go. So that's where the legs used to be at, right? They were that low. Well, so if you look at the bottom line, I felt like they were too long and that we you know we're probably shorting like half a foot. <laughs> but sometimes those little changes make a big difference, you know? And that's one thing to keep in mind that those things will will affect your design. But since we're blocking some more armor, let's go and insert some more, some more stuff here. Let's see what else is going on. Yeah, characters are always fun. For me, that's my passion. I did everything else uh, as a generalist and did environments and as a supervisor did was able to do everything, but. I'm concentrating more on just how this works for characters, like whether it's a human, a creature, animals, anything character related is like my, my main passion. Um, 
so I study all this stuff, you know, um, pretty religiously. So every time I'm out somewhere, I'm always uh, kind of <laughs> checking out what's what's going on. So it looks like he probably needs like a, a piece in the in his crotch as well, or something to protect his like organs, because this stuff up here is cool, but like it's not protecting his bottom part of his body. So here's where we're just kind of you know just taking some time to play around. Also, the one thing that doesn't help is the pose. Like, it's kind of pretty stiff, but not a big deal because that's not what we're worried about right now. We're just worried about the other stuff. But sometimes that could be a, a hang-up, right? Like, you hanged up and it's like, oh, it looks so stiff, and you want working on that, that work, keep working on it, and then you actually don't end up doing any work. You just keep, uh, you just keep working on uh, stuff that doesn't matter or doesn't matter right now. And that's one thing to always keep in mind that. If it doesn't matter right now, then you probably don't need to work on it. All right, that's good. We're, we're doing good on time. So we could probably block the rest of this guy out, which is pretty awesome because I haven't been able to do a lot on some of these streams because there's a, you know, there's a lot of questions or there's just some stuff that takes a while. But it looks like we're flowing pretty good today. So here's like an interesting problem, right? Like how do we, how do we make this covered up with armor, but also have it flexible for, for him, right? Like that means we could, we could either have to go around those little arms. Like make little individual pieces of armor that kind of Here's where we have to remesh it, because there was not enough resolution. And always move topological. Oh uh, yeah, kind of alien samurai, or uh, I would say probably more bug samurai than uh, than alien. But yeah, he could be an alien, I guess. What do you think of the design? You think it's getting there? Seems like it's cool, or is it a uh, too boring? Sometimes when stuff like this gets in the way, that's when it's good time to turn it off. So we can actually work on this stuff here. Okay, no, awesome, Thank, thanks, I, I like the feedback because Sometimes I think it's cool, or sometimes I, I don't see where it's going, and people might be like, "Oh, well, you want to try this? This might be, this might be a cool thing to try," you know. Yeah, we're just kind of talking about like, oh, thank you, thank you. Like just design, you know, like like now that I see this, now this looks like this needs some work, but how can we make this work, right? Um, let's look at some more samurai uh, chest plates. See, one thing I don't like about some of these samurai chest plates, let me move this over. Is that there just is like a barrel, right? Like <laughs> just like a big barrel of uh, a protection, which for a human is probably okay, but for uh, for what I'm trying to do, which is like an insect, like maybe it fits better this way, but it doesn't. This doesn't work for me. So that's why I start deviating from the reference. Well, you know, it, 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 Raul, it, it takes some time, you know, like we're blocking this stuff out and you saw the beginning look pretty terrible. And now we're starting to get into like, 
I want to say like primary details or primary shapes that kind of see how they're going to work out with this. And now we can start playing around with like design, you know, like maybe this guy's based on like a moth, like his, uh, like, a, like, like he's based on the moth, uh, what is it called? Like, uh, like they worship moths. So some of the design parts of his element of his costume are based on moths, you know? So like, here's kind of maybe where I start implementing some of the like wings or, or any other insect, maybe they worship other insects. And here's kind of maybe where I can start playing around with some of that stuff. So here I'm just trying to make this feel like a separate type of uh, object, like, like a plate. So what I'm doing is I'm separating this stuff out, right? Like, uh, like by adding details that kind of make it pop like this. See, that kind of works. But one other problem too is that how does it connect to the top of his chest? You know, because he probably wants to protect his chest. So maybe it has a little bit of a inset. This all part of design process, like blocking out super quick things that maybe they'll be trashed later, but uh, we're just playing around with the design and that's the whole point, right? And then we mimic that same pattern the different parts of the of the costume you know but we want to see this as a whole so we're starting to see like what what is needed you know Like one of the things that I'm seeing on, on all these samurais is the shoulder pads are like way longer. They covered up the, the bicep as well, which is kind of cool, but it seems like kind of hard to move around. But I guess it's good as a shield. Like you just move your arm up and like it protects your, your bicep and your tricep. So that's something we're going to explore around with now. Also, one thing to do is check out the silhouette. You know, is the silhouette kind of working? It feels like a samurai. Does it feel like a bee, like some kind of insect? It needs a little more work, but we're, we're getting there, right? Like to me, now his face is starting to feel kind of small, but we're not worried about the face right now. We're worried about shoulder pads. But you have to constantly keep looking at all this stuff so that you can see like what might be an issue later that you could address now or, or at least play around with it and see if it's working or not. See, so maybe like this starts to kind of cover a little bit of the stuff that this is not covering. But it also needs to curve to cover the, the back of it, right? Because uh, you can't just cover the front. Turn around, somebody shoots you with an arrow, and you're gonna die. But also one thing that I like to keep in mind is also, um, you know, shape language. Like, uh, I guess it's called like the layer cake defect. That's one way of, I heard it described before, where like you're making like the bottom base which is a giant circle, right? Or giant uh, cylinder, and then you make a smaller one and a smaller one. So you, you have like the, the ladder. So you have maybe have the same shape, and that's kind of what I'm trying to do here, where like, it's a similar shape, but you see the top one starts kind of small, and then as we're, as we're going, it's starting to become bigger, and then eventually it becomes like pretty big. But it's all by design, you know? But it also needs to become kind of curved, because right now it's like pretty flat. See, so now he's starting to bulk up. What do you guys think? But now I see how his head is starting to feel kind of small. Like, yeah, it's protected, but it feels like very delicate. 
like what's making it look really beefy is like these horns but uh let's see if we turn the horns off well even if we turn the horns off that's it looks pretty good but it needs to be bigger like it needs a bigger jaw so he can like really command people to like when he says something he's like scary to people you know at least that's that's kind of what i'm thinking let's save again because uh want to iterate on this stuff pretty quickly let me drink some water sorry oh, i read some come on some comments uh what program are you talking about that uh you can't afford because you go with, if you want to do more 3D stuff, you could use, you know, ZBrush, or you could use the iPad, or you can use a Blender. Blender has some nice stuff, or even ZBrush, the, the light version. Um, and that could get you to do a lot of the stuff that I'm doing now. Yeah, he's starting to bulk up too much, right? So maybe this is where we start taking some of this stuff. Like, well, you know, I want him to be kind of commanding and like people to be scared of him. But like, this is where maybe I added too much bulk. I could just start turning some of that down. Like maybe he's like an older general. But that's the whole reason why this guy's blocked off this way, right? Because he's... Uh, you know, we're just playing around with some of this stuff. It could also be like the hands need to be changed. So now that I change the hands, maybe he doesn't feel as, as big, right? Yeah, Sculptress is great, because basically that's that's a lot of the stuff that we're doing here, right? Like, it's just roughly sculpting Sculptress and Dynamesh, you know, nothing too crazy. And then from there, we can retopologize it if needed, or we can just not retopologize it, because retopologize is also, I don't know, a little boring, unless you actually want to learn production, which... That's what I do for my day job. Production is, is uh, one of a big part of my life, but that's the reason I do this stuff on the, on the side because production, you know, it's tough and you have to learn, you have to do a lot of UVs, modeling, topology, you know, sculpting, all the, all the stuff where, you know, it's not just the fun part of, uh, of just kind of sculpting roughly like I'm doing now. It's time to mesh this stuff. But that's where you can figure out do you want to be a concept artist do you want to be a production artist like what what uh what is it that, that drives you that you're like i need to do that for for a living or for you know for fun or maybe you're a dentist and you just do this for fun Here I'm playing around with the idea of like adding an angle, like it's nice and long sh uh, shape here, but then maybe here there's like a bit of a, like if he does this, like it's uh, it's kind of more angular, cooler shape too. But one big thing is also I have to move this stuff closer to the body so that it doesn't feel so thick because right now it's like almost too thick. Oh, wrong side break that mask see so now I'm kind of taking it down a little bit same thing with this stuff right it feels like there's no edge and it's like super thick so maybe I start playing around with the
See, but for me, it feels like, how's he gonna move around his neck? But I guess those things could have their own pivot so they can change that up. But, you know, that's, uh, that's the whole point of exploring with this stuff, right? Let's see. Oh, my, my different types of models that I do. Um, yeah, I, I could show you guys some of that stuff. Uh, let me save this real quick just to make sure it doesn't crash. Uh, let's see, what do I have? It's uh, like, you mean like production models or you want, or you're thinking about like, like, like the stuff that I've been doing for the stream. Hola. De donde vienes? Sorry, I speak Spanish too, so I just saw somebody post something in Spanish, so I'm kind of trying to see where the, where they're coming from, where they're where they're watching this stream from. So I guess one thing we can do now is maybe paint some of this um, paint some of this stuff a different color, uh, maybe like a darker gray. Sculpt at the same time. that torso torso disappeared there we go So that's kind of what this is looking like with the with the armor. But you see definitely the head now feels too small, which is fine. We can tweak tweak it now. Um, we'll start playing around with it. Let's see any questions? Francia, oh, okay, awesome. Netherlands, hey, how's it going? Oh, I used to be into D and D, so you want to build your own uh, stuff in here? That's cool. That's really awesome. That's really cool, Kay.
So it's where it starts to get tricky, right? This this head. Let's uh let's duplicate it. Um, let's play around with the proportions, but I feel like these horns kind of need to be part of the armor. But um, we'll see. Maybe we'll separate them out, or maybe they're covered with like a sheath or something. But let's play around with these proportions first. So I feel like the cheekbones area needs to kind of come out more. Maybe a little bit of the brow too. So we're gonna play around with that now. So as you can see, none of this stuff is like really linear the way you design. So that's one thing you have to kind of get used to and think about, like, like block it out as quickly as possible. Don't get married to any idea. See, we're going to give it a little more bulk. But I like the... I think it'll be good to give him a chin guard too, because I think some of these guys have like this really cool mask. I like the pointy face. I like the triangle shape he has. I need to make that triangle shape a little more pronounced. So like it, this kind of scoops into that, you know? For some of you guys that have been in the stream, do you guys like me to like, uh, one thing I've been doing is not working on these models, only only working on them in the stream. Do you guys, you guys like that? Or do you guys uh, want me to just kind of finish them on my own and then just in the next stream, just show you the, the result? I feel like it's a good idea to kind of show you guys like all the steps. So there's no, in case you guys are wondering, how do you block this out and all that? Uh, but I don't know, some of you guys might be like, oh, it just shows like the basic steps and then shows the final result. So we can move on to a different, a different thing at the, uh, the next episode. But I feel like it's maybe essential for you guys to learn. Not sure about that circle thing, the cylinder. Okay, cool. Then then I'll just I'll make sure not to like only do this on the stream because then that way you guys can see like the next steps and then eventually in maybe one or two streams you guys can see the overall process, right? Like what it took to get there from this ugly design to like the final thing and it's like, oh, that's how that works. Because I know that helps me when I see people kind of just work on stuff like... add a little more resolution to that head maybe we'll do a little bit of sculpting on this guy How's the music for you guys? Too loud or is it the kind of work for you guys?
Oh, that was a really cool show I started watching yesterday that I kind of maybe want to make on the stream, make a, a character for. Uh, I think it's called like Carnival Row or something like that. Uh, it's on Amazon. It seemed like a really cool show with fairies and all these like. Uh... Have you guys in, have you guys seen that at all? So I'm thinking one one of the episodes might one of the episodes here on we can do like a fantasy character, uh, kind of like a like a fairy or an orc or or some kind of ogre, something cool. Maybe I want to say a fairy because I haven't done too many female characters on you know like this, so it might be cool to do a cool fairy. It's weird how this works on that mode, but doesn't work on the other mode. It's weird. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. That's part of a. It's part of ZBrush, right? So here I'm just kind of analyzing the face from a couple different angles, see stuff that I like or don't like, like I really don't like what I did here, I want to have that be one big shape. Like I'd rather have this big one large brow shape, than multiple little breakdowns like that because it just looked too, too messy. You guys know what I mean? Yeah, fantasy is so awesome. Yeah, I could also do like how I prep the models for 3D printing because a lot of this stuff has to be hollowed out and optimize and make sure there's no gaps. Uh, we could run that through that on this guy if you guys want once we start printing him or posing him because he needs to be posed. I feel like, uh, especially if he's going to be stepping on some kind of spider-like thing, I feel like he needs to be, definitely needs to be posed. Yeah, I like the way this is heading. Now it feels right. It actually feels like... like that needs to be part of his, his armor, actually. That looks pretty cool. So one thing I'm adding now, too, is, is curvature, right? Because a lot of this stuff, like uh, straight lines are kind of boring, and if they start to become too parallel, like here, uh, like that line here, right, that I was just doing, I just started tweaking that, and now it feels a lot more nicer and has like a purpose to it, you know, and it's actually flowing through his brow. But one thing that I noticed that, you know, we all do as CG artists is you have two parallel lines here, right, like, and here, there's two of them, and that, that just looks pretty bad. <laughs> So one thing we have to keep doing is just whenever you see them, you know, the more your eye gets trained, you start to kind of like get rid of them, just kind of like I did. And like here too, like adding more curvature. So from time to time, I'll switch to different materials just to see if I like kind of the way worth what's going on with this guy. See, we need to tweak that shape. Cause I need to dynamesh it as well. Let's 
Oh, you think so? Like these guys on top are, are drawing too much attention away from his eyes. Yeah, yeah, that could uh, take away too much. And that's what that's what we're exploring here, right? Like, like his eyes also became too wide. Like I like them from like the three quarter view and side view, but the front is not working for me anymore. So I think I need to bring those eyes in uh, or the hints of those eyes, you know, like the, the lids part. So we, so the eyes are like the main thing that we're, that we're looking at. So maybe his eyes could be popping up because he is a bug. So his eyes could be popping up a little more. Oh, that's it. Yeah, just adding that, right? Like now the eyes, now you can see the eyes again. And sometimes it's just that easy. You start playing around with things and things break. But... It's like finding your way back, right? Like, uh, like if you didn't have your GPS, how, how would you find back? You just keep driving, but eventually you're going to end up nowhere. So with this stuff, I feel like it's kind of similar, right? Where like, like you could start playing around with it, but just remember to keep turning it and keep moving around and then look at it from a different view. Like here, he feels a little ape-like and we're starting to get back to like the, like the, the lines becoming like too parallel. So here I could add some curvature and also making like maybe those cheekbones pop out a little more. Yeah, like like that's what I'm thinking about. Like if I add too much of the chin or, or a chin guard, it might become also too alien-like. So I also don't want to get away too much from the insect. One thing that's that could be cool, um, we could play around with right now, is he's hiding his identity, right? So he could have like a chin, like a mouth mask. So you could see his face, but the, the you know, like you see this part of his face, but you don't see the, the bottom. So you're like, don't know what, what his deal is with that. And that's kind of what I'm looking at with the samurai mask. Like, could be, could be cool, could be not cool. Let's fix this neck piece, because that neck piece is... It's been bothering me for a bit. And maybe the next piece comes all the way down to make him feel more elegant, right? But maybe let's uh let's try something out. funny let's type in some numbers point zero zero five all right let's try that Change the color on that guy. Let's get rid of that mask on the face. So that's a game changer right there, right? from there I could like make this guy more pointy or try something else
What do you guys think about that? Also trying to figure out what to do with his eyes because I feel like maybe having some compound eyes might be cool. Uh, what about model my Maya modeling? What's the what's the question on that? Let's duplicate these guys. Let's play around with some noise maker. Let's see. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I think that, I don't know, I kind of like that bottom chin part, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what we can do. Maya modeling is pretty easy. Uh, it really depends, right, what stage are you at? Do you understand topology? Do you, understand, do you know how to do hard surface? Do you know how to do organic? Because all that stuff comes into play, like how, you know, like how easy it's going to be for you to do it or not. Um, but I would highly recommend it if you have the time. Some of this stuff could be way easier to do that in, but for me, it's like all about having fun, right? Uh, having fun in this, in ZBrush. Let's see. I think we could do that, but in the, neg in the opposite direction, let's see. the noise because we don't want noise there we go we're on much more cleaner surface like that well, I forgot to change that to be 3d right I guess it doesn't have UV so I can't do the UV thing well that's fine Yeah, it kind of loses a little bit of the insect vibe, right? Once once he becomes kind of too covered up. Um, but we'll see. Maybe we could have maybe we could introduce some more insects insect openings, so that it doesn't uh, look too too boring. Because I feel like now there's too much going on here. So maybe what if I uncovered a little bit of the neck? We take away a little bit of the mask, so it's just the bottom of the mask. Cause I think that feels better already. Just having a. Now it feels like he can actually move his head, right? Before it's like, well, is that hard? If it's hard edge, he can't really move his face down. So I feel like this is kind of working. I'm still not quite sure about these guys, these uh, kind of large horns type of thing. But they do add a lot to the samurai look. So I don't know, I kind of... It's a hard one for me to decide. Maybe they have to be smaller so they don't fight with these horns he has. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe the horns need to be just slightly bigger. Oh, 
Oh wow, this music that just came on is pretty awesome. Add a little more girth to them so they don't feel so like flat. Sometimes one thing that happens too is that like you get competing shapes and they start to kind of like look too noisy and, and th they don't make sense, right? So let's see, where is that piece? Because usually in Samurais they're kind of large, but maybe in this case we need to make them just smaller. Like thinner, so they feel more, more on the fragile side. Also, don't really know what they're for, which uh, maybe I need to find out what they're for, because maybe they're for protecting you from like the side view or something. Maybe they'll come around. Maybe, maybe, maybe uh, I see. I see what we can do with them. Maybe they wrap around the, the horns. I think that's that's the way to kind of make it work. So they're not competing with the horns. They're just kind of. And if he moves around, they kind of go along. Because if they were coming from the bottom up, it, it wouldn't make sense, right? Yeah, that's kind of what they are, I guess. They're just flaps to maybe diverse. If somebody shoots an arrow at you, like, it doesn't go straight to your face. I'm not sure what they're for. But, yeah, I think this, I think wrapping them up against the, the horn itself here, I think that might work. Maybe there, maybe there's like a headpiece back here that they're kind of holding on to that's part of his actual head. Yeah, I think that kind of works. What do you guys think? Looks like his jaw's not strong enough. There you go. Let's see what that looks like now. Not sure about that noise on the eyes. <laughs> I think I'd rather keep them nice and clean. I think we went pretty long, pretty uh, far with this. See, so that that's part of the armor as well. So I think maybe they're connected to that type of thing. Just saw this was just sticking out, like it wasn't even touching his chest. And that's the whole point, right? It has to protect them from whatever. <laughs> I'm 
guess like most insects, uh, you know, they're hard, pretty hard shell. So we're trying to find the weak area. So that's kind of why he's protecting his neck because that's probably the weakest area. If they hit his face or his chest, probably things things are bouncing off of him, you know. Another area he probably wants to protect is like his little arms. Or we can get rid of the little arms too because maybe those are too much. Too much going on with little arms. But maybe that's maybe maybe they're just long little arms. So now if you saw this guy kind of let's move this guy down. So if this is was a human, and you're fighting this insect guy. It's like this guy's gigantic. This guy's pretty scary, right? I think those proportions work a lot better for me because it doesn't feel so human. Could maybe lose half a foot here so he's not like eight feet tall but at least at this scale it's like if this guy was gonna fight him and we still need to add armor and bulk to the back of him um feels like he could he could probably work yeah i think so too i think the little arms maybe once they're maybe once they're uh pushed out um it will work better like uh, maybe they're holding like uh, little swords or, or blades or something right or they're just little assistants that are kind of helping him fight because he still needs like his katana or whatever he's gonna have maybe some kind of cool sword I don't know I'm really digging that face mask part the, the bottom job but we'll see one thing he might need also is uh, let me see if that circle thing where's that circle thing maybe keep the circle thing yeah I like that silhouette better what do you guys think Oh yeah, like General Grievous, I completely forgot about that guy. I love Star Wars and I keep forgetting. Yeah, maybe his arms need to be a little thinner, right? Um, let's, let's, see, let's, let's go look what, what General Grievous looks like. <laughs> it's been a while since... Uh... Yeah, maybe they're just smaller arms and maybe they have like blades. So if you try to get close to him, he'll like cut you with those little hands. Like if he was just swinging, there's always something protecting him on his armpit. I think that could work. Yeah, maybe, maybe they don't do much. Maybe they just help him hold things or something. I don't know. But I think definitely one one design thing I guess that's really nice about General Grievous is that um, his arms are thinner and that makes them feel pretty bug-like, right? Like this guy here. Like if you look at that little silhouette, they're pretty thin. So maybe his arms need to become a little thinner, especially if he has all that protection. So he doesn't feel so so giant, like so so big let's see let's go change some of those proportions a bit because all these guys have to have strengths and weaknesses right so if we make them all super buff and and they don't have any weaknesses then how are you going to beat them how are you supposed to destroy them or you know Maybe he's not as buff as we thought. <laughs> but yeah, just like I was telling you guys, don't forget to work on the back. I know it's not the most fun. Uh, probably need to make his shoulders. It's, he needs some, uh, some scapulas in there. <laughs> but...
Uh, you trying to make your own live stream? Um, I say just get on it. Just just start start doing it. You know. That's kind of how I got started. I just started just started doing it, and uh, at some point I had no viewers, but I just kept doing it. Eventually, you get some viewers, and then, you know, it, it's, it becomes a fun community. Yeah, his back is like not wide enough, but that's fine. We can always move the whole arms out. But at least this this is looking pretty good. Front's looking pretty good. Take some of those colors off, see what that looks like. So you see that changes the whole look, right? Because we we keep looking at him, and it's like now he feels like he, like he blends. So it's good to have the the colors on there, because that helps us uh, distinguish. Like also like when we're gonna do our paint job, or is there too much negative space, not enough negative space? Um, like what is his actual armor just looks like? Like. And of course, this is just a block out, so all this stuff could change at any time. But it, it really helps to see like the design overall, right? Like, what is that looking like? Oh shit, so we're almost done. <laughs> I lost track of time. Uh, it's been really, really fun, kind of working with you guys on this. Um, hopefully, you guys have had fun. I'll, uh, I won't work on this anymore until next stream. Uh, that way you guys could continue seeing like the design changes we're doing and how we're going to clean some of these surfaces up and all that type of stuff. But thanks for joining. I really appreciate you guys kind of showing up to the stream. I know it's probably super late at where you're at or super early. It's, you know, here it's just by 11 a.m. So it's time, almost time for brunch. Uh, but uh, feel free to follow me on Instagram to see some of the updates on other things I'm working on. Um, some of the other 3D print, 3D printing projects I'm going to be doing. Some of the stuff we had from the previous uh, stream, we had a helmet that we designed. So we're going to, I'm going to prep that up and start printing it life size so I can actually wear it. Um, so if you guys like that type of stuff, feel free to follow me on Instagram, uh, MagVFX, or you know, follow my website or wait till next stream. Uh, but yeah, let me know also what you guys think. I'll probably post this on the street on my Instagram. Let me know some comments if you guys see anything. Or if have any references that you guys are like, hey, you should check this out, you know. 8 p.m. over there. Oh. Cool. Well, I really appreciate you guys uh, joining, you know. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I guess with that, we'll be uh, signing off. And we'll continue working on the Samurai Dude next time. Cool. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, guys. I wanted to do a render um, of this guy on Keyshot, but I guess we'll have to wait for next time. Also playing around with perspective, just see what else we, we get out of him. But it's looking pretty cool, so... We'll continue next time. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining. See you guys. Have a good day.